Hello, and thank you very much for your presence here today for this video conference organized by UNAM Canada, the University of Mexico, the National Autonomous University of Mexico. This time, I have the privilege to introduce our key speaker, Dr. Guillermo Hurtado, a distinguished Mexican philosopher who is going to talk about some features of the process of Mexico's independence. Um, particularly what he addresses in the title of his conference, a philosophical approach to the figure or character of Miguel Hidalgo. Dr. Hurtado is a researcher and professor of philosophy at the National University of Mexico, UNAM, where he earned his uh, Bachelor of Arts and his PhD was attained in Oxford University. Guillermo has done research in mainly two disciplinary fields, philosophy and intellectual history. He's the author of six books, being my favorite, La Revolución Creadora, The Creative Revolution of 2016, and Intellectual History of Mexican Philosophy between 1908 and 1929. And many articles, uh, are very many outstanding articles and works and his research ensembles uh, a vast uh, field with, uh, where he have also uh, won several distinctions. Among them, um, he has won the, uh, the prize for the uh, young researcher in the National Autonomous University of Mexico. Dr. Hurtado he, um, has also uh, teached in uh, many recognized universities in Mexico and abroad. And Dr. Guillermo Hurtado, it is a real pleasure to have you here and thank you very, very much for giving us the opportunity to listen to you uh, and your insights about the father of Mexico's independence. Welcome and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, dear Alicia. I'm, uh... Uh, very grateful for this invitation and uh, very happy to see you, even if it is a long distance. And uh, well, I would like to, to say something about uh, uh, Mexican independence. Uh, next year in 18, uh, in 2021, you know, uh, we will uh, commemorate uh, 200 years of the uh, culmination of uh, Mexican independence. And uh, therefore, uh, we can anticipate that uh, there is going to be a, a very rich and intense discussion about uh, uh, Mexico's independence, considering, you know, uh, uh, above all, uh, how that uh, uh, movement, historical movement, can be interpreted from our present you know, and uh, uh, what sort of lessons we can learn from, from, from that movement. Uh, in uh, 100 years ago, in, 20, in 1921, uh, there was also a, a, a uh, celebration of, uh, of Mexico's independence, but uh, it was uh, uh, a very polemic because uh, there are two interpretations of, Mexi of the history of the Mexican independence. Uh, these two interpretations were developed uh, soon after the end of the uh, uh, independence war in the 19th century. And uh, uh, one can be called the liberal interpretation and the other uh, can be called the conservative in, uh, uh, interpretation of the history of uh, Mexican independence. According to the liberal uh, uh, interpretation of, uh, of Mexican independence, and I'm using the, the concept of liberal here in, in the Mexican sense. I mean, perhaps it's not going to be exactly the same as, as, as uh, people in North America understand a, a, a liberal, but uh, um, the so-called left, more left-wing or le liberal uh, interpretation of, uh, of Mexican independence claims that Miguel Hidalgo, Father Miguel Hidalgo, El Cura Hidalgo, is the father of Mexican independence, is the father of, of Mexico as a nation. Whereas the conservative uh, point of view uh, claims that uh, Agustin de Iturbide uh, is the father of Mexican independence and therefore the father of Mexican nation. This is an interesting uh, uh, issue because, uh, for example, if we think of uh, the history of the United States, 
there is no argument, there is no discussion about who the father of uh, the United States is, you see, no? George Washington. But here in Mexico, uh, we have these discussions about who should be considered to be the father of our nation. And uh, it, it's not a question about uh, historical facts. Uh, uh, the uh, discussion here is not about uh, whether we are missing some facts or others, also, or whether there are some documents that have to be discovered in order to, to settle the, the, the question, but how to interpret those historical facts. Therefore, uh, uh, the question is not really a historical question. That is, it's not a question that is going to be solved by professional historians, or, or, or that is, it's not a, a question that is going to be uh, uh, solved by, by, by uh, historical research, no? uh, but it's a question of interpretation of history. No? It's, a, it's a hermeneutical uh, question, and therefore it's a political one, and uh, at the end, a philosophical one. Uh, philosophy of uh, history in Mexico uh, has been a, a, a discipline that, uh, uh, especially in the last century, in the 20th century, was uh, uh, cultivated by very eminent uh, Mexican philosophers. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, Edmundo O'Gorman, uh, who wrote a, a, a paper, a conference, a very interesting uh, conference about the, the significance of Hidalgo's uh, uh, movement. But we can also uh, remember another of uh, Mexicans, uh, Mexico's most uh, important philosophers of last century, who, called Luis Villoro, who, who wrote a book called El Proceso Ideológico de la Revolución de Independencia, which he also uh, tries to understand from a philosophical point of view, Mexico, Mexico's independence. I have a small book which was published in 2011, which is called Mex Mexico Sin Sentido, in which uh, uh, I dedicate one of uh, the last chapter of that book to to uh, to the significance, the philosophical significance of Mexico's independence. So the question is this: How can we understand from a, a from the point of view of the philosophy of history a, a Mexico's independence today? A, that is, how can we a, a give a meaning to those facts in the past? a meaning that can uh, be uh, uh, useful for Mexicans today and that could help us no, to uh, continue no, or to imagine, rather I think to, to imagine Mexico's future. Now, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the argument or, or the polemic between uh, 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 those in favor of uh, those scholars or those, those Mexican intellectuals or historians that are in favor of Hidalgo and those that are in favor of Iturbide has to do uh, to some extent with the question of violence, of, of, the, of the role of violence in the, in, in the historical process. Uh, Hidalgo's independence war was a violent one, whereas uh, Iturbide was not as violent, definitely not, not at all as violent as, as Hidalgo's, no? and it was the result more of a series of pacts and understandings between uh, several groups in Mexico that uh, managed to achieve the, 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 the desired independence of Mexico in 1821, uh, 11 years after uh, the, the uh, process that began with, uh, with uh, Hidalgo. Mexico's, Mexico's independence was therefore very long. It was a war that lasted more than a decade and uh, many people died. Uh, Mexico's economy was very affected by, uh, by, uh, by, these, uh, uh, by these wars. And uh, when in uh, September of uh, 18, 1821, it will be the declared the independence of uh, the Mexican empire. Uh, it's interesting to, to remember that uh, Mexico was born not as a republic, but as an empire. Uh, 
Well, people were very glad and very, very happy. And uh, immediately the comparisons between uh, Hidalgo's movement and Iturbide's movement uh, uh, began to be made. Uh, people said Hidalgo uh, was mistaken no? in the way in which he tried to achieve independence. No? Whereas uh, Iturbide understood no? how to uh, achieve independence without, uh, without too much blood and destruction. So therefore, people say, or some people say, the conservative interpretation of Mexican history claims that uh, uh, the real father of Mexico's independence, the real padre de la patria, father of the fatherland or of, of the country, should be Iturbide. And, and not only because he was the one that actually achieved the independence, but be because of the means or the ways in which he achieved that independence, that is, peaceful means, negotiated means, uh, political means. No? Uh, Iturbide is considered to be a, 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 a master of a, a political movement rather than of a military movement, even though he was general. No? So therefore, uh, people claim that, uh, some people claim that uh, the, the real independence that we have to remember today in Mexico is Iturbide's independence because it was peaceful. That is, uh, uh, if we want to uh, conceive the course of Mexican history in a peaceful manner, in a political manner, uh, then we should uh, uh, un underline the nature of the process of Iturbide's independence. And this is important today with this claim, because uh, Mexico uh, has decided to become an, a democratic nation in which uh, politics over force uh, should be the rule of action of, uh, of, uh, of Mexican life. To choose Hidalgo on top of uh, Iturbide is to choose violence violence as the uh, as the force you see that uh, builds the nation that solves the problems that uh, uh, that uh, the force that's uh, like a river you see like the current of, of, of the river of Mexican history is that force that pushes our our history along centuries. This is a, a philosophical question because it has to do with, with the, the, the role of violence in history. Uh, some uh, philosophers, for example, Marx, uh, Karl Marx, claim that uh, 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 violence is necessary for social change, yeah? that uh, we should not uh, uh, abominate of uh, violence because uh, otherwise we will uh, reject social change. Uh, the, the, the changes that are uh, improvements or, or steps that uh, nations take, steps that, that, that go take up a, a, like in a ladder, you see, the history of a nation towards uh, a, a, a higher uh, level are, are uh, violent and uh, we should not reject that. Uh, for example, Mexico's revolution in 1910 was also a very violent movement, but it's considered to be a, a movement that produced a better Mexico, a, a, a Mexico that was more just, more, uh, uh, more equal, uh, a better uh, country than the, the country that existed before the revolution. And the same could be said about uh, Mexican independence. Uh, without the violence, uh, uh, executed by, by Hidalgo and his troops, Mexico would have never been the country that it is. Because uh, uh, Hidalgo, as uh, has been uh, claimed by, by many authors, for example, by Edmundo Gorman or by Luis Villoro, not only uh, uh, was uh, uh, the, uh, the head of a independence movement, but it was a head of a revolution of a social revolution, which uh, determined 
At that earlier stage of Mexican history in 1810, or determine already some of the the big uh, 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 tasks, you see, or ideals, you see, of Mexican social change. Let's remember, for example, that Hidalgo abolished slavery in Mexico in 1810. One of the first things that he, he decided you know, uh, was to abolish slavery uh, forever in Mexico. It's important to consider you know, how, how uh, this uh, uh, measure, this uh, uh, law that was uh, passed by, uh, by Hidalgo, uh, was at that moment very important in the history of the Americas. In 1810, remember, the United States, for example, still was a, 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 a country that accepted slavery as legal. So uh, behind Hidalgo's uh, uh, movement, not only there was a, a desire to, to, uh, to have independence, and that is to, to be able to rule our own destiny without depending on people abroad, you see. but also a, an, ide an ideal of social justice. Uh, Hidalgo also uh, passed others, several laws no? uh, uh, that uh, show how he had a, a, a social um, uh, uh, idea of a, a change in Mexico that inspired, no doubt, the, the rest of Mexican history. Uh, he abolished as well uh, taxes uh, uh, that had to be paid by, by Indian uh, 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 villages to the government, no? uh, tributos, tributes. And uh, he also claimed that, that laws, that the laws that should uh, rule Mexico should be, uh, he said, soft, soft with poor people. Uh, so he had a, a, a very a, a complex uh, social idea, no? of how to, uh, how to change Mexico, not only uh, to make Mexico a, a, an independent nation, but also to make it a, a, a nation which should be more just no? and more equal. Justice and equality, these two main ideas that have dominated Mexican history throughout uh, the centuries. Justice and equality, which were as well you know, the two ideals that move uh, Mexicans in the Mexican Revolution in 1910, you know, from 1910 to 1917. You know, and that is still today, those two ideals of justice and equality are uh, the, the core you see, of our political uh, discussion in our country. So I think that uh, Hidalgo deserves to be called the father of, uh, of our nation, because not only he uh, conceived Mexico as, as, a, as a separate entity, as a nation in itself, but also had an idea of how that nation should be ruled. Uh, and that is, I think, uh, uh, very important. Uh, uh, according to Hidalgo, the, uh, uh, nations have the right, the natural right to uh, rule themselves. So uh, he had a philosophical argument in favor of independence in which he claimed that uh, nations are like entities, you know, so just as an entity, just as real as, say, for example, a human being. You know, uh, and that in the same way, just human beings have the right to be free. You know, and nations, which are entities that exist in the, in the, in, in the universe, have that right you know, to, to, to uh, to be free and to, to rule themselves. And I think that uh, uh, this uh, theological argument, because uh, uh, what he claims is, is that uh, this natural law of, of, uh, of, uh, that rules over individuals and nation at the end is a, a, a creation of God, uh, can be connected to another very interesting uh, feature of uh, uh, Hidalgo's uh, movement. And it's the way in which he used uh, Guadalupe, the Virgin of Guadalupe in his movement. Uh, perhaps you know that uh, the day after he began his, his war, his, uh, his movement, uh, Hidalgo, who was a priest, 
uh, took a banner of uh, the Virgin, the Virgen de Guadalupe, and used it as a, as a flag, as, as the war flag of his movement. The symbolical uh, effect of this uh, decision was extremely important, and it still is today. Because uh, the uh, Virgen, Virgen de Guadalupe is, as you probably know, is perhaps the, 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 the symbol, no? the most powerful symbol that unites Mexicans. No? Uh, even, for example, Mexicans that are not uh, Catholics, that are not religious, still feel that the Virgen de Guadalupe represents something very deep about uh, uh, Mexican identity. And uh, uh, Hidalgo had the, the intuition, the very deep intuition, of using this symbol of the Virgen de Guadalupe as a unifying symbol of his troops. Now, uh, philosophy of history can also be uh, uh, interpreted in a theological way. Uh, let's 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 uh, let's uh, imagine some things uh, in this line. You see, uh, for example, for a for a Catholic, for a Mexican Catholic. Uh, what was uh, the justification of uh, Hidalgo's decision to take Guadalupe's, uh, uh, La Virgen de Guadalupe as, as, as his flag? Was this according to the will of God, for example, or was that against the will of God? Uh, if uh, we claim that uh, uh, God was happy with the uh, with, uh, with Hidalgo's decision to use the Virgen de Guadalupe as his symbol, then we could say that uh, Hidal uh, God uh, was happy with Mexican independence. Now, this, this might seem a, 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 a rather sort of extravagant way of uh, understanding history, but not, not in Mexico, not in Mexico, because uh, uh, long, many years before uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, in the, the, the Hidalgo's movement, Mexicans already considered that uh, uh, the apparition of uh, uh, La Virgen de Guadalupe uh, in Mexico, in the outskirts of Mexico City in the 16th century, was a, a, some sort of, uh, of uh, uh, gift that uh, not only the Virgin, but mainly God, had given to Mexico as a nation. Uh, Mexicans believe that they were a nation in the eyes of God because La Virgen de Guadalupe had appeared and had talked to Mexicans and had sort of uh, expressed her concern and therefore God's concern about uh, the destiny and about the happiness of Mexican people. So uh, according to uh, to these uh, intellectuals, thinkers, priests, people in general, uh, Mexico as a nation existed because God conceived Mexico as a nation, uh, and the, uh, the text, the, the the evidence for that was the Virgen de Guadalupe. So let's see uh, if uh, La Virgen de Guadalupe so to speak, accepted Hidalgo's decision to take her banner, her flag, as the flag of the independence of Mexico, then it could be said that uh, uh, God wanted Mexico's independence, uh, that it was uh, something that uh, God uh, considered was good for, for, for Mexicans. Uh, however, and this is quite a very interesting thing, the Catholic Church in Mexico uh, rejected immediately uh, Hidalgo's movement. Uh, they cons uh, not only that, I mean, they uh, uh, excommunicated, no, uh, I'm not sure if this is the, the right uh, verb, I mean, they, they expelled uh, uh, Hidalgo from the church. He was, uh, 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 when he was captured in, in, uh, in 1811, a few, few months after the beginning of his movement, uh, 
he was judged by a, a not only by a civil uh, tribunal but also by a religious tribunal. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, he was condemned by 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 the church or by Mexican church. But then, how can we explain? How can we explain? And this is something that uh, uh, Mexican Catholics have always asked. How can we explain that uh, that uh, uh, Hidalgo was not uh, and is still today not accepted as as uh, as the Catholic Church is as as a legitimate legitimate uh, leader of Mexico's independence, and at the same time that the Catholic Church has not said anything about or, uh, the way in which he used the most uh, uh, intense and, and profound symbol of Mexican Catholicism, which is La Virgen de Guadalupe. Uh, the church uh, was always against Hidalgo, and uh, the church in the 19th century defended the view, the conservative view, that the real father of the nation was Iturbide. But then what we find here is another version, you see, of, uh, of that struggle, that, that, that struggle of interpretations, hermeneutical struggle about, about Mexico's independence. The question is not only, and, and, and I'm going to be a little bit more philosophical now, it's not only a question of, uh, of how to interpret history, but how to interpret a uh, uh, Mexican hood itself. Uh, what is uh, discussed is, is not only who is going to be considered in, Mexi in, in the books of history or in monuments or whatever, the father of our nation, Hidalgo or, or Iturbide. What is at stake here is, is what is Mexico's identity? Who is our father? Are we the sons? No? See, uh, metaphorically speaking, of course, of Hidalgo, or are we the sons of Iturbide? Who is our real father? And if we don't know who our father is, it's obvious that we will have a, a, a problem of identity. This identity problem of Mexico has been uh, considered by many uh, uh, philosophers and, uh, and writers uh, 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 in the last century. Perhaps you know the famous, famous book of uh, Octavio Paz, The Labyrinth of Solitude, in which uh, uh, Octavio Paz, you know, the, the great Mexican writer and Nobel Prize winner, asked exactly the same question. Who is the father of Mexicans? And until we know who the, our father is, we will not be able to know ourselves and to know what sort of destiny we will have or rather what sort of destiny we will build ourselves or we will work ourselves to create. So this, this uh, struggle between Hidalgo and Turbide has not been resolved even today, 200 years after, the, after Mexican's independence. And uh, I doubt that uh, next year in 2021, we will have a, a, a solution to this struggle. Mexican history in this sense is still very much alive, not only as, a, as an academic discipline, but as, as, a, as a series of questions that have an existential uh, uh, significance, an existential question. Uh, well, the difference between choosing Hidalgo or choosing Iturbide as, as our father is, is, is really a very significant uh, uh, difference. Hidalgo was a priest. Iturbide was a general. It's not the same to be the son of a priest than the son of a, or the daughter of a, of a general. Uh, the consequences from a symbolical, political, psychoanalytic point of view are quite, quite drastic. Now, I think that's a, a, a an, I'm, I'm finishing now, you see, I'm, I'm uh, reaching the end of my talk. Uh, Mexicans have to uh, uh, end with this dichotomy, uh, with this struggle uh, in, 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 uh, in Mexican, Mexican history. We will have to be able to put Hidalgo and to put Iturbide in 
the right place. Uh, we cannot defend a, a extreme view according to which uh, only Hidalgo has a, 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 the right to be uh, remembered mm -hmm. and forget about Iturbide. And we can we have also to be able to remember Iturbide in its own right and uh, and and uh, and, and uh, consider Mexican independence as a process, you see, that has uh, several actors. However, if you ask me what my, my opinion is, I think that uh, Hidalgo really is the father of our nation. Hidalgo is the father of our nation, and that means, of course, that violence, violence was the mean by which Mexico was born. Uh, individuals, all of us, uh, when we were born, we suffered. You know? uh, birth is a, a, a painful event. And I think the same happens sometimes with nations. Uh, the birth of Mexico was a painful event, was a bloody event. But we have to come to terms with that fact. And uh, uh, we have to recognize that without, without that uh, 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 metaphysical violence, you know, to use a, a, a concept that was uh, used by uh, by Walter Benjamin you know, in, in one of his books, without that uh, that uh, divine violence, Mexico would have not achieved its independence and its identity. But on the other hand, you see, we still can believe you see, that uh, once Mexico is independent and once we have a nation of our own, we have to uh, try to solve our problems, not with war, but in a peaceful manner. And uh, 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 that doesn't mean that we should reject Hidalgo's great achievement, uh, which is to have created a nation, a nation that today exists and struggles to determine its future. That's what I could say. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Dr. Guillermo Hurtado, for sharing your, this conference uh, and your interpretation on a myriad of perspectives on the Mexican independence, and particularly in the intriguing figure of Miguel Hidalgo. Moreover, I want to thank the audience for following this video conference through our diverse channels uh, of communication. UNAM Canada is committed to the broadcast of many of these interesting opinions on the several topics of our, of our past, of our history, and I would be very glad if you keep following us in our platform. Thank you. Thank you, Guillermo Hurtado, and thank you all.